How would you know if your stress bucket is too full? Well, the symptoms are pain anywhere in your body, belly fat, which is cortisol and stress hormones. It's the inability to sleep at night. It's muscle weakness. It's fatigue. It's brain fog. It's anxiety. It's depression. And they all actually have an order. So what I want to do with you today, Cheryl Townsley, your wisdom coach, I want to talk about what fills our stress bucket up and how can you change it? Because stress is not your schedule and your stress is not managed by this part of the brain. Your stress is when your nervous system in the brain stem, or if you've been following me for a while, the RAS, when the brain stem or RAS perceived that you are threatened, ah, stress kicks in. All the stress hormones, tunnel vision, shallow breathing, digestion shuts down, all the blood goes to the extremities so that you can fight or you can run, and you aren't consciously running any of that. So here's what that also means, that you can't consciously change it. But there are simple strategies that you can do that can lower this stress bucket. So. We're going to talk about four of them in just a bit, but what we're going to do now is talk about my pretty little stress bucket, because this is like your nervous system. And when you're born, you're even born with some stress. Whatever you inherited from your parents or grandparents, whatever the pregnancy was like that your mother had, whatever the birth situation was like, um, maybe you had antibiotics as a child, or you had tubes, or you fell down, or you started having surgeries, or you started being on some drugs, or maybe you had sugar in your formula, or maybe you've eaten processed foods all your life. You know, the sugar, the mac and cheese, all that junk. Oh, and also, what about maybe there's a little bit of tension in your family. Um, maybe with your parents, or maybe now it's with uh, your spouse, or maybe it was school was just not your thing. Uh, maybe you played sports and had a concussion. Maybe you were just graceful like me and you could walk and fall down. You know, all of those things that threaten your nervous system creates stress. Now, we're going to pretend that there's another spigot right here. I didn't have that and I couldn't figure out how to create it, so we're going to have an imagination. So we're going to talk about two spigots. One, how you can de-stress and what happens if you don't know how to de-stress and this stress load just keeps building and building day in and day out, judging others, judging yourself, comparing yourself with others, finances. Oh, you had a job change. Oh, you can't stand politics. Oh, there was something that happened at work that really offended you. You've got unforgiveness. Now, this is about when clients come in to see me, somewhere between, in between here and here. This first level is when you have just sort of stage two stress, which is when your adrenals are exhausted. And that's when you start to feel pain on a regular basis. And a little side note, if you've had an injury, whether it was soft tissue, bone, muscle, somewhere between two weeks to about three months, the body is healed. So why do you have pain after that? Why do you have pain years later? It's because when the stress gets too high, one of the ways that the body tries to eliminate that stress is through pain because once you start hurting you do less and the brain stem goes I got her attention she's gonna do less and maybe that's going to reduce her or his stress so pain is an indicator that you've gone too far and the body is trying to get your attention but if you're just here there could be pain there could be muscle fatigue muscle weakness where you can't really lift anything there could be the inability to go to sleep and rest at night but as that stress continues to build and it's become more chronic, ah, that's the depression, the anxiety, the ADD, ADHD, senility, and extreme brain fog. How many people do you know living in this area? And you go, well, you got a little bit of room up here. Yeah, the closer you get up here, you're dead. So you don't want to go that direction. So what I'm going to give you are four tips so that you can begin 
Isn't this clever? You can begin to lower some of this stress. So we can do some of these four tips. We can also learn to have different input. Instead of inputting stress, we can input low inflammatory foods. We could input water. We could input having fun and relaxing and laughing. So we can change your input. We can pull off some of this stress or you can continue on the path that you're on. So let's go through four strategies and here's what I'm going to do to make it even easier. I'm going to demonstrate it and then in the comments below the video sometime in the next 15-20 minutes what I will do is put where to find the information. So don't stress over that. Just watch and the goal is for you to find the one tip that your nervous system likes. And how will you know that? Here's what's so exciting. When your nervous system likes something, when your brain likes something, it rewards you with increased movement. That's pretty cool. So the way we're going to do this is you're going to find a way to assess your nervous system. So it's any range of motion. It could be taking a straight arm up and you go, sure, I can't do that. My shoulders hurt. Okay, you can do another one. Just put your arms out at 90 degrees and see how well, now you're not flapping back here like you're a bird. It's keeping it as straight as possible. Now when you're doing this, pay attention to how you do it. You might be, want to be in front of a mirror, unless that stresses you. The key is notice how did you do it. You might want to do a trunk rotation. And if you do that with both eyes open, notice where your arm goes that direction and that direction. Or one of my favorites, because it happens to be easy for me, is a toe touch. So put your feet within an inch together at the toes and then start with your eyes level and just roll down. So right now I am about one joint down on my toe touch. Now, if you did any comparison or judging, you just increased your stress load. This is all about noticing, not comparing and not judging and not making it hard, it's finding what's easy so you can let your brain stem have a positive experience. So, the first thing we're going to do to lower our stress load is breathe, four, two, four. So you do your assessment and then you're gonna breathe in for a count of four, hold for two, and exhale for four. So feet hip distance apart, you're just gonna breathe in, not with your shoulders, we're not gonna flap our shoulders, we're gonna breathe from our diaphragm. So that would be breathing in, hold, breathe it in again, Now, if math doesn't stress you out, that was 10 seconds each time. If you did it six times, it would be one minute. So I encourage you to do it for one minute. I just did it for 20 seconds, but let's go see if that changed my ability to move forward. Okay, so we're just gonna come down. I could put all the way to these knuckles. First time it was here, next time it was here, and that was 20 seconds. So clearly that's a tip that my body likes. Now let's look at a second way to pull out some stress. Is there a question? So did your flexibility actually increase? Did your muscles change or did something else change? Oh, that's such a good question. Did something change with the muscles? Muscles respond to stress or stimulus. So if you do something that stresses your nervous system, you restrict muscles and you can't move as effectively. If you do a movement, because these drills are all about some form of movement, you can't think your way through this, you have to do something. So when you do a movement that stimulates the brain, that it finds interesting, but not threatening, you actually increase your range of motion, your movement, your flexibility and strength. And so for some of you, trainers, athletes, take a weight that you can barely do a bicep curl with. Choose one of these techniques, do the technique, then come back and see what happens. I've done all four of these and found that two or three of them work especially well for me with weights, with my push-ups, with my range of motion, all kinds of things. This is a discovery. 
Let it be fun. Let it be playing. It's not about a performance because as soon as you make it a performance to be perfect, you just stress this guy and that's not what we're after. So what are we doing next? Ah, the vagus nerve. Now I've talked about that and in the notes, what I will have is where you can get the sparker and how to do it because I've done a video, but a sparker is simply a way to spark an aspect of the nervous system. And since your vagus nerve initiates here, it's the only one that goes into the brain and down into your digestive tract. So when you have poor digestion, tightness in the neck and you can barely turn it or tightness in the shoulders, often the vagus nerve is impacted. So in the video, I simply show you how you can spark using a little sparker. They're like $15 on Amazon. I go through the different places so that you can spark it. You can do it on yourself. It's more effective if you have someone else doing it with you. The video goes through that. I'll put it in the notes. So let's just, I'm going to do it really fast. So don't get stressed. Video goes slow. I'm just going to spark my vagus nerve. Remember, the other video is going to tell you how to do it slowly. Let's just go back and see if that made any difference for me on my ability to move forward. Nope, that one didn't change anything for me, so it stayed the same. So either it wasn't enough stimulation or my brain thought, eh, it's not a big deal, or it would have been better to have someone else do it for me. So we're just noticing. Now, let's see what our next one is. Ah. This is a breathing restoration spark. And this one, you, you can do it on yourself, but again, it's much better if someone else does it. This one doesn't have any other video, so I'm gonna go a little slower, but it's so simple you can't miss it. You still need a sparker. And what the person who's going to do this to you is going to do is go right at the base of your sternum. Your sternum is that bone right here, breastbone, and right below it, there's a little divot area. This is actually the test point in muscle testing for chronic stress, heartburn, belching, poor digestion on a long-term basis. Uh, isn't it interesting that that and breathing and the vagus nerve are all connected? Our body certainly knows something. So they're going to touch right here. And then this is the left rib cage of the person being sparked. So it's my left. It would be on your right when you're looking, but it's my left. And we're concerned about mine because it's my body. So you simply are going to spark one, two, three, four places along that left lower rib curve. So just doing nice breathing, spark, 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 four sparks. Now let's just see if that happened to make any difference for me. Go back, my toes are about an inch apart. I went about that much further. So my body really liked that, it liked the breathing. So both breathing, the 424, four, and sparking the breathing, my body liked. Vagus nerve, it was like, yeah, that's okay, but that's not your biggest. It could be totally different for you. Now, what do I have for number four? <sighs> yes, we're gonna take some more stress load out of the bucket. Question. So do we just keep doing this every hour? <laughs> How often do you do you this? Do become perfect after four times? Now, wouldn't that be wonderful if we could just do it every two minutes and then be perfect? No, because then your first of all, your brain would get tired of it, so that wouldn't work. But if you do those once a day, you know what? Experiment. Play with doing it once a day, twice a day. It's all about discovering what your body likes. But if we just do the same thing over and over, we lose the novelty. It becomes less of a stimulus and our brain gets bored. So we don't wanna bore or threaten our brain. We want stimulus, enjoyment, and fun, and always keep it easy. And how will I know, if, how will I know it's making a difference for me? How will you know if it's making a difference? You take any one of these range of motions. In, in actual real I know, I'm gonna to get to that. You take any one of these, you take this, and do the drill. If it improves, what you can know is you've just taken stress load out of the bucket. And if you learn to do other things like, what are the inflammatory foods that you could get rid of and replace with foods that your body loves? What if you went to bed a little bit earlier? 
Um, what if you drank enough water? As you start doing, see there's so many little things you can do. As your stress bucket decreases, all of a sudden you're noticing, well that doesn't hurt as much. Um, I don't have a headache. And a lady come in the other day and she said, well my hair is still thin. And then she, we kept talking, but her hot flashes were gone, her energy was up, her sleep had improved and her bowels had improved. So she had four improvements and one that hadn't changed. What do you think she focused on? <laughs> See, part of this is for you to start to notice what's different instead of good, bad, right, wrong, and judging. The more you can notice what's different and what created it, you can change literally every aspect of your life. So hopefully that's helpful. Let's get back to the R&R &R pose. This one I'm not going to demonstrate, but I have a, uh, a picture on the Cheryl Townsley website that I will put in the comments. But basically, if you remember, when you're under stress, blood flow goes to your limbs, to your fingers, to your hands, and to your feet so that you can fight or you can run away. And so there's no focus by the nervous system in here. And this is where our calm comes from. So the the R and R pose is where you lie on the floor, put your feet up on a chair or footstool. So now your feet are higher than your heart, and you're using gravity to bring that blood flow back into the trunk. Fifteen minutes in that position. No Pokemon, no texting, no television, preferably no other stimulation, just breathing and relaxing. Fifteen minutes is equivalent to four hours of rest. I've seen it work for moms, um, corporate executives, graduate students in college, children taking a rest with mom or dad. Um, my husband uses it regularly. Forrest finds that it works really well for him. And when you go to the page, it's going to talk about how to do it, what it means, and what happens if you don't fall asleep, if you do fall asleep, or if you notice no change. Uh, that's when you're pretty much up here. So that's going to be in one of the notes. So we've done four ways that you can remove stress. There's different ways that you can change what's going into your bucket. And I talked about water. So I'm going to tell you some of the things I put in my water to make sure I really enjoy it. Um, one of the things I like to add, and you can get this in any health food store, is Trace Minerals Power Pack because it's minerals. Because when you're up here and this spigot is creating the pain, the inflammation, all of those things, you're burning through your minerals. That agitates anxiety, depression, all kinds of muscle issues, inability to sleep, leg cramps. You're also burning your vitamin B just rapidly. Anxiety, depression, all the issues that go with the nerves. You're burning up vitamin C, which is your allergies, because allergies are a stress response. So people are thinking, well, I'll just put in a whole lot of B12. I'll just put in a whole lot of B. I'll just take a whole lot of vitamin C. But they've got the stress bucket filling up faster and faster and faster, and nothing is pulling it out. So as I talk about these tools, they're helpful, but learning how to change your perception of being threatened changes everything. So with your water, Power Pack, it's a trace mineral product that you can get in any health food store. You can buy it online. It's got all your minerals and electrolytes, 72 trace minerals. So it's a product I've used for over 20 years. I also like to put in one of Dr. Keller's products, GRB. It's an instant boost of glutathione. Not glutathione itself, but the body's ability to, to have a burst of making it on its own because when your cortisol is up and your stress hormones are off, your glutathione is dumping like this. And then sometimes I put in some grapefruit essential oil because that helps the lymphatic system. It helps with that puffiness. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just lather that all over and it would just instantly get rid of the lymph? Well, it doesn't happen quite like that, but putting it together can make a difference. So let's summarize what all this means. This is like your body and when you're under stress, Stress is not conscious, it's whatever threatens the nervous system. So what threatens you may not threaten me. You know, Forrest hiking up and down a mountain, catching a ball, doesn't phase him. But you know what? <laughs> Let's watch this one. I can think about a ball being thrown at me, and I don't have a clue where to put my hands, 
And, and then if I'm supposed to look at the ball, I'm ducking and closing my eyes. So if I just even think about catching a ball or doing it in front of you because our environment can take something easy and make it threatening, doing it on a stage, doing it on a little pencil thin fence. Now if I go back after having just thought about catching the ball, I've reduced my range of motion about six inches. So that means everything in me tightened up. Digestion, my face, my nervous system, my muscles. And how many thoughts do you have a day of what you can't do, of what really ticks you off, of what you don't like about other people, what you don't like about your life or your body or you? Those thoughts fill your stress bucket. And then what you're eating and all those other things. But don't get overwhelmed over all of it. Take one of the four tips and begin to reduce the stress and just know that over the next several weeks and months, I'm going to give you easy tips all the time. Most of these took one minute. The one that took 15 minutes, you're just laying down with your feet up. So what did we talk about? Well, let's go back. We did the 424 breathing, 10 seconds, six times for a minute. We also looked at, I've got my notes in here, so I'm looking. We talked about sparking the vagus nerve. We talked about sparking the breathing points. And we talked about the R and R pose. We talked about water, so I gave you a bonus tip. But before you do any of those, find some sort of an assessment. Notice how you do it. It could be a weight. It could be standing on one foot. Ha, ah, that was kind of cool, because I actually am doing better at standing on one foot. I like that. Do an assessment. Pick one of these strategies. Go back and reassess. If it made no difference, either form was different or it just wasn't stimulating. And let's say you go through all four of these. No change on any of them. Here's what typically that means. Your nervous system is pretty shut down and we would have to do probably some customized drills for you because it could be something with your eyes, something with your ears, it could be something going on with the hips and so it means to customize it. It means that these four the nervous system couldn't respond to. So we're going to hope that that's not true for any of you. That you're going to discover at least one that works for you and discover how fun it is to learn what your nervous system loves, what your brain loves, lower this stress system, discover that you can be pain free, discover that you can sleep all night, that you can digest your food and feel good, that your brain can function, that your emote, ah, you know something? Oh, this is one last piece of information. All your energy goes to the brain stem before it comes to here. So if you're stuck back here in stress, feeling threatened, you can't manage your emotions. So if you're wondering why your kids or somebody you know can't seem to manage or deal with those inappropriate emotions, that's a frontal lobe activity. And you don't get here when you're stuck back here. So learning to get past here means you can deal with your emotions. You can actually make choices. You can actually choose to do something and follow through on it. You can sleep well at night. You can move without pain. Here I am, almost 63. No meds. Doing pretty well. Always more that I can do. I sleep all night. I have great energy. My mental clarity is better than college. I handle a pretty full stress pretty full schedule that I'm learning how to balance. I live with an amazing husband, but we have learned how to create that. I just want you to know that no matter what your age, that's possible. Because there was a point where I was up here and almost dead. But here I am in my 60s and that stress load is decreasing and my quality of life is increasing. That means it's possible for you. Assess, try one of the drills, reassess, and just know that somewhere in there, one of those will work for you. I'm Cheryl Townsley. I'll put those tips on my page under this video so you can find everything easily. I look forward to hearing from you, your comments, your feedback, what's working, what's not working, because we're in this together.